I'm Rick Buck and I've been a dentist for 15 years. You're about to see how I perform a routine filling, so like and subscribe if you have teeth. So here are the patient's x-rays before we drill on the teeth. These two teeth have three cavities right here and one void in a previous filling here that we will be fixing by doing four separate fillings on these two teeth. We start by drilling on this tooth and then on the tooth behind it, we are drilling straight down to the cavity on this tooth number 12. Now I want you to see things as we as dentists see them, meaning we look at the tooth through the mirror while drilling. It takes years to become fully used to drilling while looking in a mirror. Now, I stop the drilling right here so we can visualize the hole that we've made because here we have barely uncovered the tooth decay. The small dark line you see here is the decay in the front side of the tooth number 12, which has made its way past the enamel layer. For reference, I'm gonna show you right now the cavity again on the x-ray so you can see what it looks like on an x-ray and how that would look in the mouth to compare. So now that you've seen that decay, let's skip forward to tooth number 13, which is the majority of what I will show you for the rest of the video. So I'm just uncovering all the tooth so I can expose the decay and you can now see the decay on what we call the distal surface of number 13. This decay looks more intense than the one we just saw on number 12, but they look about the same size on the x-rays. Thus, x-rays can be misleading on the actual size of the cavities. They'd show you pretty well where the cavities are, but they aren't that great at showing you the size. So sometimes we get in there and it's just completely a surprise how big those cavities could be. Now that we have uncovered the decay on number 13, we will switch from my high speed drill to a slow speed drill. We do this because the high speed handpiece is better and faster for drilling on solid teeth. The slow speed handpiece is better for mainly removing tooth decay for a few reasons. As I am removing the decay with the slow speed drill, you can see that the mush of the decay will come out. The mush consistency tells me that I am removing the decay and not solid tooth. Now, in case you care, I'm doing a lot of this for demonstration purposes. Normally, I would have removed more of that decay with the high-speed handpiece, but I wanted you to see what it looked like as I removed the decay with the slow speed drill because it does come out just this mushy consistency. But if I would have used the high-speed handpiece to remove most of it, you wouldn't have been able to see that. So once again, this is what full-on decay looks like when it's being removed by the slow-speed handpiece. But now we keep drilling the tooth with a high-speed drill, making the ideal size slot for a filling. As I'm finishing up that, I will also remove the old filling with the void in it that I showed you in the x-ray earlier. My number one rule when I am drilling on fillings and even crowns is to remove as little of the good tooth structure as possible. The main reason for that is the more tooth you drill away, the more likely the tooth will become sensitive. And most of my patients rarely ever complain of sensitivity after a filling. So I must be doing quite a bit right if I can pat myself on the back for a second. Moving on. When drilling, I use a lot of water because it keeps the tooth from overheating and becoming sensitive, which once again is very, very important. Also, the water rinses away the debris and reduces that kind of burnt smell of tooth. But the main reason for the water is to once again, reduce the chance of sensitivity. If the tooth heats up too much, it can cause inflammation and the tooth can die and eventually get an infection. So the water keeps the tooth cool. So here we are now after a lot of drilling and you can see there's a slight discoloration left behind which is still some of the remaining decay. So now we will remove the remaining decay once again with a slow speed drill. This time instead of that complete mush we got of decay we get kind of flakes of half mush half solid tooth. You see this when you are almost done removing all the decay. In fact that's one way I know that we're almost done removing decay. But there are three ways I confirm that the decay is completely gone. First, and obviously that decay discoloration needs to be visibly gone. But that doesn't tell us for sure that all the decay is gone. Second, I check with that little explorer to see that the tooth feels solid and not sticky with that pointing instrument. Now I'm gonna turn up the volume here and when the decay is all gone, that explorer sounds solid like it's rubbing up against a, a stone or something like it does here. And Finally, the third way you know that the tooth decay is all gone, as you see here, when I use the slow speed drill, I get 
dust instead of mush or even half mush coming out of the tooth. So now I've confirmed with those three criteria that all the decay is gone and we have only drilled as little tooth away as needed and we can place a stable filling on stable tooth now. We start the filling of that slot by putting on a matrix band that will keep the filling and the products that we use to fill it isolated from the saliva and blood and the rest of the mouth. Now in the filling process there are many step variations and product variations of everything that I'm going to do from here out. So your dentist will be a little bit different from what I'm doing. I like this classic matrix because it is solid and doesn't break or loosen like other newer models do. Now after we have the matrix down, we place these wedges in between the teeth. Wedges are important because if you don't use them, the fillings will not be tight against the adjacent teeth and food will get caught in them if the adjacent teeth are not contacting each other tightly. It does this because the wedge creates an extra space for more filling to make up for the thickness of the matrix band when it is removed. The wedge also adapts the matrix to the tooth so our liquids don't flow out and create a mess. And you're gonna see those liquids right now. The next step is applying a desensitizer to the tooth because we drilled down to a layer below the enamel. Anytime you drill past that enamel layer, there's a possibility that your tooth will become sensitive. This layer called dentin has tiny tubules connected to nerve endings. The desensitizer helps reduce possible sensitivity, especially for deep fillings. Now, after I put the desensitizer on, then I do one last quick check with the Explorer for decay again because I'm pretty paranoid about that. Now on the subject of decay, quickly my favorite toothbrush, floss, and other dental products by far are in Amazon affiliate links in the description below this video or if you're on your phone you can get them from the store below this video as well and then you don't even have to leave the video. Those dental products will give you a stunningly clean mouth. You can also watch my video posted at the end of this video to see why they are the best. This next step is the most critical part of everything I do during the filling. Here I am going to apply this stuff called GC liner. The main reason I apply GC liner is that it also reduces sensitivity in a couple ways. Dental schools teach to apply liner on deep cavities because of its anti-sensitivity properties. But I do it on almost every filling because sometimes even shallow cavities cause sensitivity. Once I started placing GC liner on every filling in my dental practice, I went from rarely having patients with sensitive teeth after a filling to almost never having a patient with sensitive fillings after I drilled on their tooth. Once again, anytime you drill on a tooth, sensitivity is possible due to exposing that layer underneath your enamel. Another benefit of that GC liner is that it releases fluoride. So even if you happen to miss a little bit of decay, the liner can remineralize that part of the tooth into solid tooth if it's not a lot of decay left behind. The light that you saw me shine on the tooth is what set that liner into place. After the liner, we place etch on the tooth for a few seconds, which will help the bond adhere firmly to the tooth. We then thoroughly rinse that etch out of the slot that we prepared, and then we coat that whole slot that we made with this bond. I use this bond because it is the strongest bond that I have tested. You see, I bonded fillings to pieces of tooth and saw how much pressure it would take to break them off. And this bond that I'm using is by far the best and strongest bond. For the best hold, I scrub the bond into place and remove the excess with light air and my suction. Then I set or cure that bond with this light. Next, I put resin filling into the slot of the tooth that I made, which is this doughy texture that will integrate with the bond and harden when I use that light again to cure or set it. An important note about these resin fillings is that when they harden, they will shrink about one to 5%. Filling shrinkage is bad for two reasons. It puts stress on the tooth and can cause sensitivity once again, especially a type of sensitivity you get when chewing. And that shrinkage can also separate the filling from the tooth, which could cause micro leakage where decay can enter between the tooth and the filling. So it's important to get as little shrinkage as possible. To minimize the effects of the shrinkage, the filling is added in layers, which will alleviate that shrinking pressure that puts on the tooth. Now you will also see that right before I cure it, I press down with this blue filling set 
setting instrument. This instrument pushes the filling material into all the crevices to minimize voids. And light travels through the instrument to set the filling. When the filling shrinks, it can't shrink inward with this blue instrument in place. And thus it reduces the possibility of sensitivity in the tooth and also that micro leakage that might happen. Lastly, this really pushes the filling up against the other tooth, which creates a very tight contact like the wedge was also meant to do. And with a tight contact, once again, that prevents food impaction. What you see here obviously looks nothing like a tooth or how you would want your filling to look. So we must file it down until it looks and feels like a tooth. Now when I say it feels like a tooth, that means when you bite down, you don't want it to feel uneven or off. I use three things to determine if the bite feels good and even. First, when a patient bites down, you can hear when all the teeth touch evenly. And that's the least scientific way I use to see if the patient is biting evenly. Second, I just ask the patient if it feels even when they bite. However, a lot of times people are too numb to determine this accurately. Lastly, we use a blue carbon paper to see where the patient is biting down. I like it so there's barely any blue showing up anywhere I put the filling. And personally, I will keep filing the filling down until the opposing tooth is barely touching the filling, if contacting it at all. The reason is, if the filling is at all high, this can cause the filling to throw off a patient's bite. And that can have a lot of bad consequences, including pain. Also, if a filling is too high, that tooth will take more pressure when biting, which will cause pain and sensitivity in the tooth ligaments. Then one more important criteria that we talked about is we floss the teeth to ensure the floss snaps through, indicating that the adjacent teeth are tight enough to stop food impaction. Also with the floss, we check to ensure that the floss isn't shredding so you can floss the teeth well. Now once that's done, finally we smooth everything until the floss snaps nicely. Then all we have to do is polish the tooth and voila! you got a cavity-free tooth with the filling. Now let me show you quickly what the filling looks like on the x-ray. Now, not all of you, but many of you arrived at this point because of a lack of adequate hygiene. And you may not even realize that you have poor hygiene. Watch my daily tooth care video I have posted for the best technique, tips, and product recommendations for a stunningly clean mouth that avoids tooth decay, gum disease, and gives fresh breath. Watch my daily dental care video I have posted now for the best technique, tips and product recommendations for a stunningly clean mouth that avoids tooth decay, gum disease, and gives you fresh breath. The best dental products that I recommend are an Amazon affiliate links in the description below, or you can order them from the store below if you are on a handheld device. And then you don't even have to leave YouTube to order those. If in Southern California, my dental office is in the description as well. Like and subscribe to my channel if you have teeth.